Hey, what's going on everybody? In today's video, I'm going to show you how we can create a stopwatch program using JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. All right, let's get started, everybody. We will create an H1 heading with text of stopwatch, and I will give this H1 element a unique ID of my H1. Then we'll create a container for our stopwatch. This will be a div element. This div element will have an ID of container to contain everything. Our container is going to have two sections, two div elements. The first div element is going to be for our display. ID display. I'll give this div element some initial text as a placeholder. We'll have zeros for hours, minutes, seconds, and milliseconds. Then our next div element will have an ID of controls for all the control buttons. Within this div element of controls, we'll create three buttons. The first button will be start. The ID of this button will be start button, BTN short for button. Then I will set the on click event handler equal to a JavaScript function. We will eventually create a start function. We still need to define it. Let's copy this button, paste it twice. The second button will be for stop. The ID will be stop button. The on click attribute will be for a stop function. The text on the button will be stop. And then we have a reset button. The ID is reset button. The on click attribute will be for a reset function. The text on the button will be reset. All right, and that is all the HTML that we need. Let's go to our CSS style sheet. I will first select the body of our document. We'll use Flexbox to display everything because I like Flexbox. Display Flex. The Flex direction will be a column. Then I will align items center. I'll set the background color of this application background dash color pick a color again I like using HSL values I'll set the lightness to 90 percent our container is going to be a lighter color we will select the ID of my h1 that's going to be the heading I will set the font size to be 4 rem the font family I will pick Arial with a backup of sans serif. For the font color, I will set the color property to be pick a color. I'll pick black, but set the lightness to 25%. All right, now we are going to select the container that contains everything besides the heading. This area. We will select the ID of container. I will use Flexbox within the container. Display flex. The flex direction will be a column. And align item center. Let's add a border. A border around the container. Five pixels solid. And I will round the corners. Border, radius. Let's do 50 pixels. And I'll add a little bit of padding. Padding, 30 pixels. And I will set the background color to be white. Background, color, white. We'll work on the time display next. Select the ID of display. I will set the font size to be 5REM. For the font family, I'm going to set it to be monospace. And the font weight, I will set to be bold. I'll change the color. I'll set the lightness to 30%. I'll give a text shadow to the display so it looks like it's somewhat 3D, like it's popping out. So text shadow. Two pixels and two pixels for the vertical and horizontal offset, and a blur of two pixels. 
Now for the color, I'm going to lower the alpha to 75% or so. That's not bad. Then I'll add a little bit of margin to the bottom. Margin, bottom, 25 pixels. Now we have to style the buttons. We will select the ID of controls, but I would like the button elements within the controls. After selecting the ID of controls, select any buttons within that element. We'll increase the font size of the buttons. Font size 1.5 REM. I will set the font weight of the buttons to be bold. I'll add a little bit of padding, 10 pixels by 20 pixels. I'll add some margin around the buttons, 5 pixels. I'll set a minimum width of the buttons to be 125 pixels. Let me scroll down. I'll remove the border, border none. Set the border radius of the buttons to be 10 pixels. Change our cursor to be a pointer when we hover over the buttons. Let's see if that works. Yes, it does. Then set the font color of the buttons to be white. Now let's color the start button. We will select the ID of start button. Set the background color. Pick a color. I'll start with something green. Pick whichever color you would like. I'll pick this shade of green. Here are the values. When we hover over the start button, we will access the hover pseudo class of our start button. I'll decrease the lightness by 10%. Let's copy the markup that we have for the start button, paste it twice. We'll add color to the stop button and the reset button. I'll set the stop button to be red. Here are the HSL values that I picked. When I hover over this button, I'll set the lightness to be 10% darker. For the reset button, I'll set that to be blue. When we hover our cursor over the reset button, I will set the lightness to be 10% darker. Not bad. For all of the buttons, I'm going to add a transition effect. Transition. Select the background color. We will create an ease transition after 0.5 seconds. We will ease. So when you hover your cursor over the buttons, there's going to be a slow transition when we hover. Okay, and that is all the CSS that we need. We will now go to the JavaScript file to add some functionality. Let's declare all the variables we'll need. We'll get the ID of the display and store a reference to it. Const display equals document dot get element by ID. The ID that I'm selecting is display. This ID. We will create a timer. Let timer equals null. Timer is going to hold the ID of set interval so we can keep track of it and stop it if we need to. Then we need a start time. Let start time equal zero. Let elapsed time equal zero. Let is running. This will be a Boolean, which I will set to be false. If the stopwatch is currently running, we will flip this to be true and flip it to be false to stop it. What are the functions that we need? We have a start, stop, and reset function. Function start. Function stop. Function reset. We'll add one more function of update to update the display. Function update. We'll begin with the start method. We'll enclose everything within our function within an if statement. We need to check to see if our stopwatch isn't running. 
if our stopwatch isn't currently running, if not running, then start the stopwatch. We need to set the start time. The start time equals, we will get the current date, date.now, minus the elapsed time, which will be zero initially. So just to demonstrate what the start time is, I'm going to console.log my start time. So the start time is going to be in milliseconds since Epic. Epic, basically speaking, is when your computer thinks time began. We will set our timer equal to the set interval function. We will call the update function every 10 milliseconds. So if I was to display my timer, console.log timer, this is what it is. Our timer stores a unique ID to work with this function if we ever need to stop it. We'll take the Boolean variable of is running, set it to be true, because our stopwatch is now running. Now we need to go to the update function to actually get it working. We need to get the current time. Const current time equals access our date use the now method. What is the date right now? We will calculate the elapsed time equals the current time minus our start time, whatever that was when we initially pressed the start button. So the current time minus our original start time gives us the elapsed time. And this is going to be in milliseconds. We need to convert the elapsed time into a readable format using hours, minutes, seconds, and milliseconds. We'll begin with hours. Let hours equals take our elapsed time divided by, to convert milliseconds to hours, we can follow this formula. Elapsed time divided by 1000 milliseconds times 60 seconds times 60 minutes. We don't want any decimal portions with our hours, we will enclose all of this with the floor method of math. Now we're going to do something similar with minutes. Let minutes equals take our elapsed time. We need to convert milliseconds to minutes divided by 1000 milliseconds in a second times 60 seconds in a minute, then modulus 60. Modulus gives you the remainder of any division. We don't want our minutes display to hit 60 or go above 60. Once we hit 60, it'll reset back to zero. Enclose this formula with math.floor to round it. Math.floor. Okay, then we have to take care of seconds. Let seconds equals take our elapsed time divided by 1000 to convert milliseconds to seconds. Modulus 60. Enclose all of this with math.floor to round it. Now for milliseconds, let milliseconds equals take the elapsed time, which is already in milliseconds, modulus 1000. Milliseconds is normally four digits. We're going to divide it by 10. We only want the first two digits. Divided by 10. Enclose all of this with math.floor. Math.floor. Then let's change the display. We'll access our display. Access the text content of the display. Set it equal to a template string. If you would like to display the hours, it's optional. We will add a placeholder for hours. Colon, placeholder, minutes colon, placeholder, seconds. If you would like to display the milliseconds, we can add a placeholder for that. Colon, placeholder, milliseconds. Let's see what we have so far. I'm going to hit the start button, and here's what we got. So the stopwatch is running, but we should add some zeros for padding. 
So I'm going to refresh to stop it. We'll convert hours, minutes, seconds, and milliseconds into a string, then add some padding of zeros to it, if the number is only one digit, not two. We will convert hours, minutes, seconds, and milliseconds into a string before displaying it. So let's take hours equals hours. I will typecast it as a string. Follow this with the pad start method for the first two digits add a zero. Let's do this for minutes, seconds, and milliseconds. Minutes, seconds, and milliseconds. We should have some zeros for padding to make each display two digits. And that does appear to work. Nice. Now we just need to get the stopwatch to actually stop. Right now there's no functionality. Going to our stop function, we need to check to see if our program is running. Is this variable is running true? If is running, if that's true, then stop the stopwatch. We will use the clear interval function. We need to pass in that unique ID for the timer. This will stop the stopwatch from running. Then we will calculate the elapsed time. Elapsed time equals the date right now, date.now method, minus the original start time. Then set is running equal to false because the stopwatch is stopped. It's not running anymore. Now we can start the stopwatch and we can stop it. We can start it and we can stop it. The last thing we need to do is reset the stopwatch. We can really just copy everything that we have when we initially assign these variables. We need to clear the timer, clear interval, pass in our variable timer that contains the ID of the set interval function. The start time will be zero. The elapsed time will be zero. Is running will be false. Change the text content equal to all zeros. This is for the hours, minutes, seconds, and milliseconds. All right, let's see if everything works just fine. We can start. We can stop. We can start. We can stop. We can reset. We can start. And we can stop. All right, everybody. So that is how you can create a stopwatch program using JavaScript, HTML, and CSS.